Hi and welcome to Unit 2, Topic 3, Video 7, where we're going to be looking at stem and leaf plots to represent different types of numerical data. Okay, it's time to talk about stem and leaf plots. These are really important and almost certainly will come up in some of your assessment moving forward. So I've drawn a stem and leaf plot, it's not quite complete. We're going to add the completed touches to it. But first I want to have a bit of an open discussion about what this means. So first we have the stem and it comes first in the title, so it's, it is the first bit you look at. And then we have the leaf. Now this represents a set of data. Let's talk about the data that could be shown here. So we don't have a key. We need to have a key. I'm going to do a key. And my key is going to be, I'll just pick one of my data points here. 1 slash 2, this data point, means 12. Now it's important to have a key because 1 slash 2 could mean 1.2, or it could mean 120, or it could mean 0 0.00012. So we don't know. Now, usually it means 12, sometimes it's one of these, it's not often this, but we don't know what the data looks like. So it's really important to have a key. Now if 1 slash 2 means 12, Maybe this stem and leaf plot represents a set of data about the ages of a, a club or a group of people. Um, so let's have a look at what this data is. I'm going to write down some of the data points. The first one has a stem of 0 and a leaf of 9. That means it's just the number 9. Then we have 12. And then we have stem 1 with the data point 4, which is 14. So you can see this stem of 1 represents multiple data points. 1 and 7 makes 17, and 1 and 9 makes 19. So this goes on and on. We've got 23, 23, 25, 26, 28, 32, 35, 37, and 41. What we can see in the stem and leaf is a few things. First of all, if you flip your screen up, you can see that as long as I've been nice and neat and tidy and well ordered, it looks a little bit like a histogram or a bar chart or a column chart. So it gives us the shape of the data. We can see the spread, we can see the skew, we can see what's happening with this data. That's the first thing. So it looks pretty symmetrical to me. The second thing we can find quite easily is how many data points there are. Because the leaf represents each data point. The stem represents the tens column in this case, and multiple data points have the same tens column. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there's 14 data points in this case. The other thing we can look at is the mean, median, or mode. Now the mean's tricky in here. Because to get the mean for this set of data, we have to write all the data points out, add them together, divide by 14. So it's a bit tricky, but the median and mode come quite nicely from the stem and leaf. Firstly, the mode. Now, there's two sevens, two twos, two threes, two nines, but that doesn't mean that they all represent no modes. There's two fives as well. Okay, because this nine is different to this nine. This nine is nine, this nine is 19. This five is 25, this five is 35. They're different. There's only one common number that appears in the same um, stem, and that is these two threes. So 23 is our mode, and that being our most common number. It appears twice, and there's a single mode in this set of data. The median, well firstly we've just determined that there's 14 numbers. So if we go back in time, the median will be the 14 plus 1 over tooth value, which is the 7.5th value and the 7.5th value will be the average of the 7th plus the 8th value over 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So that's 23 and 25 averaged out means the median is 24. And that's the measure of centre. Of course the other way we could do the median, which is going to completely ruin any stem and leaf graph, is to go take the top one off and the bottom one. And then the next top one, next bottom one, top one, 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 bottom one. we're left with these. The average of 3 and 5 is 4. 24 is our median. So there's another option. So there's a fairly basic stem and leaf graph. And in this case, because I said it was ages, age is a time-based thing, so it's technically continuous data. But because humans inherently measure age as a whole number, well, then you might count your years, or count your birthdays, so maybe it's countable as well. But either way, it's fairly simple continuous data or discrete data that we've measured here. We can use stem and leaf plots to represent all types of data. So let's do another couple of examples now. Uh, the first one, where we sketch that stem and leaf plot. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to sketch this stem and leaf plot that is to do with the heights of a group of students. Now, we can expect this data to be reasonably consistent. Um, we might have an outline on the low end, we might have an outline on the top end, but we should get that nice centre. So what we're going to do to sketch this stem and leaf plot is do a bit of analysis first. What's our lower stem, what's our higher stem, and then we can build it up. So firstly, I've got all of my 160s, because I can see those first one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And then I'm going to go through, I've got 180s here, 180 and 180. And I can see I've got some 170s, I'll go over the top with those just to discriminate. And that's actually all of them, there's no 150s, no 190s. So this is pretty easy, there's only three stems required. So I'm going to sketch this. We'll start with our stem. And then we have our leaf. And our stem is going to start with, I'm going to keep it two, because I, I could do one and then six, five, six, seven, like that. But, of course, that's going to just give me one whole list. So I'm going to use the double digit as my stem. So I'm going to start with a stem of 160 centimetres. And I don't need the zero there, my apologies. That is never going to come up clean. 170 and 180. So now I'm going to go through, and the last example and this example, we're going to do an ordered stem and leaf plot. It really makes no sense not to do an ordered stem and leaf plot. It doesn't show as much except for the shape if it's not ordered. But in this case, I'm going to do it ordered. So I'm going to start with the 160s. I'm going to go through and just mark them off as I find them. So 162 is the smallest. And then I've got a 165. So let's go through. I've got a 2. I've got a 5. I've got a 6. And that's the only 6. And I've got, I think I've got two 7s. So 7... Seven, and then I've got an eight, and that's all my 160s. Now my 170s are the ones that are above, so I'll go through and cross these off as well. I've got a 173, 172, I've got a 171, I've got a 172, and a 173, and a 177. That's all of my 170s. And I've got a 182 and a 186. So that's two and six. And you notice here that this is my fourth values here, and I kept them in order. Because then I can look at my shape, and it actually looks a little bit like, if I'm looking this way, that is a positively skewed distribution. It's all pushed up to this end a bit. So maybe the average height for this class group is in the 160s, and there's a few outliers above, but there's no outliers below. There's no 150s below, and that could happen. I just want to check. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and I've got 12 data points. I've used this to measure the shape and consider the shape. I could find medians, modes, etc. Um, I could even find the range of this data. 186 is my upper value, 162 is my lower value. So I subtract those, I get a range of 24. So there's sketching a stem and leaf plot. Well, I hope that was a helpful video. As you can see, stem and leaf plots are really handy for representing data without losing any of the information given.